Hi everyone, as a lot of you know, or my subscribers know, I've had this printer for quite some time, but I've not actually used it. Uh, I've not done a video about it or anything like that. I did one or two things and the quality was just terrible, and um, I guess I just lost interest. I just thought, well, it's not good enough, forget it. But recently I've had time to play about with it, and to actually find out how to set it up properly, and how to actually use it properly, and this is what I'm going to share with you today. Um, I've looked on YouTube for uh, setup guides for this and how to get it right and all that and I couldn't really find anything. But finally, I found out how to do it, I've read some books and whatever else, um, or snippets of books, and now I can finally share with you how to very simply get this thing to work properly. And I'm going to show you that, I'm going to share those details with you now. So after doing this video, I'm hoping that you can get something along the lines of this, or this sort of quality. As far as I'm concerned, the quality of this is very good. Um, I mean, there are no imperfections really. Um, the quality is pretty good. That's just paper on the bottom there. Um, so this is what I'm hoping you'll be able to print. Well, I'm pretty sure you will be able to print it uh, to that standard if you follow the guidelines in this video. So when you first buy your 3D printer and set it up, if you're like me, you think, all right, let's get, let's get started, let's print something, but it doesn't really work. So here I've written a list, and I've compiled this list of stuff that I've learned while messing about trying to perfect this, and um, here we go. So to start with, let's say you've just set your 3D printer up. The first thing is, is it sturdy? In other words, is it on a decent surface? Is it rocking or anything like that? If it's rocking, you need to stop it. You need to do something with it. You need it to be completely solid like this, okay? So if you try and move it, it won't move. So if it moves, you've got a problem. Second, is it level? Is it on a level surface? If it's not on a level surface, you can have problems, okay? So it needs to be rel relatively level. The next thing is, is it well grounded? Now this bit here needs to be properly resting on the surface. Depending on the surface, this cannot rest properly. And this bit here can lift up or down. And if that happens, the print won't work. It'll stuff up this because it won't level correctly. So you need to you need to make sure that's properly grounded um, and it's not moving. The next thing is the frame and belts. To start with, is the frame tight. So this bar here and this bar here, are they tight? Are they loose? Um, if so, there's a problem. Same with these two here. If they're loose, there's a problem. It needs to be tight. So these need to be not so much these screw pieces here, these can be a little bit loose, but these areas here need to be tight and secure. Um, so that's the first part really, that's the setup part done. So next, um, the nozzle to the bed distance. Is the nozzle to bed distance okay? And I'll show you how to do this now. So let's go to here and let's go to Auto Home. So press on here, go to Prepare and then go to Auto Home. and it'll go down and it will prepare itself so yeah we've gone to auto home okay this will go down and what we have to do now is level the bed um, well not so much level the bed but uh, make sure the distance from the nozzle is fine so we'll just wait for this to go down and I'll show you how I calibrated mine perfectly okay so when you've done auto home you should be able to see this here you should be able to see the nozzle on the bed. So I'm going to get a piece of paper and I'm going to just slide the piece of paper in between the nozzle and the bed like this. And if the piece of paper goes through okay and it's snug then you're okay there. If it's too loose then you need to tighten the screw here. Then when you've done that you need to push this along like this and do the same for this side. So again push the piece of paper in I've got a piece of plastic in the way there but basically you clean it off and put the piece of paper through and if it goes through okay then there's no problem there so you've got the first um, the first two corners done then the next thing you need to do is pull the bed this way and be careful not to um, to touch these after you've set them because it'll mess it up so using the black piece here just pull it towards you and try this corner and again it's the same trick put a piece of paper under uh, that's a little bit too slack actually so I'll need to just adjust this and it needs to go uh, 
this way just to make it a bit tighter that's better and then finally this side so pull it back this way and try to put the paper under and that's perfect again so that's leveled the bed okay so just put that over there so let's just push this back now and I'll just auto home it again prepare auto home so that's the bed leveled and ready to go the next thing is um, the bed temperature is the bed temperature okay so on um, on the info screen here you need to go to well in fact there's different ways of doing this but I'll just show you roughly if you go to control I think it is and go to temperature and then go right down <coughs> to preheat plaque on that's what I've called it on mine the bed temperature should be 50 okay so around about 50 to start with this can change but if we just say 50 for now that'll be good enough now the bed temperature is the temperature of this here and if it's too cold then uh, basically your plastic model won't stick to the bed if it's too hot, then the bed, uh, the model will start to melt at the bottom. So about 50 degrees, it seems to be about right for me anyway. So let's go back over here. Now, it starts to get a bit more difficult here. So we've got the nozzle temperature, the flow, and the speed. So the nozzle temperature, this depends on the type of filament which you use. And each different filament has a slightly different temperature, or so I found anyway. So this one in particular, I can set at around about 180. But what if you don't know the temperature for the filament? Then you have to make something called a temperature tower. Anyway, for now, uh, just take my word for it. That the best temperature for this is 178 or about 180. I'll explain why later, but it is. So if you go to set that to 180 uh, for the nozzle, then you'll be doing well. Particularly for this filament, other filaments are different. Now it does matter, because if you have, if you say have this at 200 degrees you'll get a really crappy print if you do it at 170 degrees it won't print at all so just um, 20 odd degrees or even 10 degrees or even 5 degrees actually can make a big difference to your print and um, maybe I'll show you that later but maybe not I'm not sure so let's go back over here the flow but the flow control is how fast the plastic actually feeds through here feeds through the nozzle and if you leave it at 100, the chances are, or certainly for my particular 3D printer, it will print terribly. So you need to be able to fiddle with the flow control. Um, for me, it was the reason why I pretty much gave up on this to start with. I had the flow at 100, and I assumed that the flow would be perfect. Little did I know at the time that the flow was completely wrong, and it needed to be much faster. Anyway, so more on that soon, hopefully. And the next thing is the speed. Now I recommend that you, you start the speed at a low speed and um, on this particular model if you just simply do that on the home uh, screen thing you can see it's 100 and if I do this it's 112 etc. But say start at 100 for the time being. Okay. The next thing is the filament move, uh, free to move. Now I had a particular instance of course we don't have a, a proper uh, circular thing on here. But I did have an instance where this got caught up in something. I think it got trapped behind here and it couldn't, this here couldn't pull it through. So it messed the print up. And if it's a little bit tight, like say there's a bit of resistance like that, it just can't pull enough through to make it flow correctly. So make sure this is completely loose, like this. Make sure it's completely loose, there's nothing in the way. You can even have it like that. Or one time I put it up here and I was a little coil and it just fed through. You need to make sure that's loose, okay? If it's jammed on something, it won't work. And then the last thing is the software that you use to actually create the STL file or the G code file or whatever it's called. And there are some settings in there that are not related to this, but that have a big change on the final outcome or the final print. So I'm just going to go into a little bit more depth now about um, what you can do in order to get the best print.